So in the previous video, we saw that how uh, some rearrangements could simplify our addition operation. That is, uh, we can find it some easily by doing some rearrangements. And in this co in this uh, video, we would see how the same method of rearrangements, like uh, the using the property of whole numbers by associative property, the commutative property, and the distributive property of whole numbers, we can make some rearrangements for the products also and that would simplify our steps. So the first question is this one that you have to find a product by suitable rearrangement and the first one is to multiply it by 1768 and multiply it by 50. Now you remember when we were doing addition and while making rearrangements we I said that the trick would be always try to group together those numbers which would give you a digit zero after adding right that the last digit would come around uh, about zero so that would actually simplify that was a trick the same trick we would apply here also that group together those numbers in in product or in multiplication group together those numbers that would give zero in as the as a last digit okay so if if you see here that if you multiply 2 by 50 if you multiply 2 by 50 you would get if you multiply 2 by 50 sorry if you group together 2 and 50 if you group together 2 and 50 and then 1 7 6 8 so this would actually give you 100 right it would give you 100 and if you would have group together 1 7 6 8 and 50 then this would be a hectic one right it would be too large multiplication but here you could see that if you group together 2 and 50 then you would get 100 and when you multiply 100 with 1768 then you would get 176810 and 0 so you could see how easily we found the answer for this question and the trick would be that always group together those numbers that would give you some number in the form multiple of 10 multiple multiple of 100 or multiple of 1000 right let's let's do some more questions on the same topic and that is the second one is 8 multiplied by 291 and multiplied by 125 and if you see here that if i group together 8 and 125 if i group together 8 and 125 and then multiplied by 291 so if you if you multiply it if you multiply it what would you get you would get 40 and then 46 it is 16 and 22 1000 you you would get 1000 here okay if you multiply 8 and 125 and then this would be 290 one and therefore the answer would you, that you would get would be two nine one and zero zero and zero this would be the answer there could be if if you want to simplify it further what you could have done it is like you could have made it eight as four multiplied by two right and then two ninety one and one twenty five and then you could have grouped together 4 and 125 okay you could have grouped, grouped it together and then 2 and then 291 but that's a little bit longer step and you just straight multiply 8 and 125 you would group, group them together this would give you 1000 and you could clearly see that if you multiply 1000 by 291 then the answer would be much easier I mean to derive the answer would be much easier for you and the last one is 625, 279 and 16. Now here the trick would be that okay let me do one thing. If I if I like write it like this this would be 625 and then 279 and then can we write 16 as 8 multiplied by 2 8 times 2 right we can write it 8 times 2 and then what you would do is 625 and group together 8 
and then 2 and then 279 now you could see that the property that we are using here is the commutative and the associative property of whole numbers because we here we change the order of the numbers we change the order and if you remember that if you change the order of numbers in multiplication and in, in addition in case of whole numbers then they will follow the as commutative property and associative property i mean sorry for changing the order it would be a uh, commutative property and for grouping together different numbers i mean if you change the grouping then you would get the uh, you use the associative property so here it's 625 multiplied by 8 and therefore if you do it so what it would give you it would it would be 8 5 40 and 4 8 16 20 and 2 8 6 48 and 50 so this would be 5000 and now it would be multiplied by 2 and then by 279 and this would give you if you multiply 5000 by 2 you would get 10,000 you would get 10,000 and then multiplied by 279 and therefore the answer would be 279 followed by how many zeros 4 zeros so 1 2 3 and 4 now you would be wondering that hey if i if i wrote 16 as 8 times 2 then why didn't we just group together 6 2 5 and 2 now if you group together 6 2 5 and 2 then also i mean even even that case would be um, you know uh, is possible and you can do this 2 5 10 and 5 and 2 6 12 and then 8 okay even in that case you will get the answer but you know it's it's getting a little bit longer in this case here you could easily get 5000 and then multiply by 2 and easily you can get 10000 here it's like they are now multiplying 8 1 2 5 0 by 8 and it's a little bit you know little bit not not that much easier for you so these were the three examples right these were the three examples that you saw here and in all these in all this uh, problems the trick would be that always multiply numbers that would give you uh, i mean group together those numbers that would you know give you numbers in the form of multiple of tens or multiples of hundreds or multiples of thousands